you for tuning in to the Grand Solar Minimum channel. Today I would like to go over some volcano headlines and offer my perspective. Here we have an article from express.co.uk. They are known to sensationalize headlines and skew perception. Let's take a look at this article. Yellowstone Volcano Eruption Discovery. Magna Plume from Mexico found under supervolcano. Yellowstone National Park researchers have made a shock discovery of a magma plume beneath the park that runs all the way from Mexico, heightening fears the supervolcano is about to blow. Stephen Grand and Peter Nelson from the University of Texas believe they have discovered a column of hot volcanic ash, which is a mixture of particles and gas emitted by an eruption. The plume, which stretches from the core mantle boundary beneath the park, could be the answer to increased volcanic activity at Yellowstone. It comes after experts at Yellowstone National Park claim to have seen the world's largest geyser erupt on the evening of Thursday, March 15th. Let's take a look at steamboat erupting. Steamboat's major eruptions last from 3 to 40 minutes and are followed by powerful jets of steam. Steamboat does not erupt on a predictable schedule, with recorded intervals between major eruptions ranging from 4 days to 50 years. The geyser was dormant from 1911 to 1961. Minor eruptions of 10 to 15 feet, that's 3 to 5 meters, are much more frequent. After an eruption, the geyser often vents large amounts of steam for up to 48 hours. A spring located nearby will drain completely during a major eruption of the geyser. The spring then refills within a few days. The last 10 major eruptions were on the following dates. This activity has sparked fears among volcano watchers that the supervolcano, located 15 miles south of Steamboat Geyser, is due to erupt. The article then states, and to make this situation even more terrifying, there has been 11 earthquakes in the region since the geysers blew, more evidence of the subsurface action in the magma pits. Well, with this geyser activity, this area will experience some earthquakes. This is considered normal activity. The Express article also states, in their paper published in the journal Nature Geoscience, they say the mantle is approximately 600 to 800 degrees Celsius, which is warmer than any other area. But the pair suggested more research is needed because there are still outstanding questions about how Yellowstone exists in its current location. Now the title alone is alarming. It obviously did its job because many people are clicking on it and sharing it throughout social media. So let's take a look at the paper they are referencing on nature.com. The Yellowstone hotspot located in North America is an interplate source of magmatism, the cause of which is hotly debated. Some argue that a deep mantle plume sourced at the base of the mantle supplies the heat beneath Yellowstone, whereas others claim shallower subduction or lithospheric related processes can explain the anomalous magmatism. Here we present a shear wave tomography model for the deep mantle beneath the western United States that was made using the travel times of core waves recorded by the dense U.S. Array Seismic Network. The model reveals a single, narrow, cylindrically shaped slow anomaly, approximately 350 kilometers in diameter, that we interpret as a whole mantle plume. The anomaly is tilted to the northeast and extends from the core mantle boundary to the superficial position of the Yellowstone hotspot. The structure gradually decreases in strength from the deepest mantle towards the surface. And if it's purely a thermal anomaly, this implies an initial excess temperature of 650 to 850 degrees Celsius. Our results strongly support a deep origin for the Yellowstone hotspot and also provide evidence for the existence of thin thermal mantle plumes that are currently beyond the resolution of global tomography models. So essentially they are dissecting how the volcano originally formed 
in that particular location. They conclude by suggesting that there is likely a thin plume stretching from the core mantle boundary beneath the park and that it's responsible for the volcanism seen at Yellowstone. But they also acknowledge that more research is required because there are still questions regarding how Yellowstone exists in its current location. They theorize that it's possible because the plume is held steady by a part of the Pacific Large Low Shear Velocity Province. They finish by suggesting that current methods used by other researchers to study the plumes may not be adequate because global tomography is not capable of capturing thin thermal plumes such as the one they suggest lies beneath Yellowstone. Last November, a similar finding made headlines when NASA discovered a mantle plume almost as hot as Yellowstone supervolcano that's melting Antarctica from below. That team concluded the Marie Birdland mantle plume formed 50 to 110 million years ago, long before the land was hidden by ice. Heat from it, they say, has an important local impact on the ice sheet, and understanding these processes will allow researchers to work out what will happen to it in the future. The largest earthquake ever to strike Yellowstone Park was a magnitude 7.3 quake in 1959. The Yellowstone Caldera supervolcano last erupted 700,000 years ago, but experts say it should blow every 1 million years or so. As you can see with the media, it's sometimes hard to discern and look at things objectively. We all must slow down, zoom out, and be objective without jumping to conclusions. Thanks for tuning in to the Grand Solar Minimum channel. As always, we'll keep you updated. Please like and share.